The New York Rangers just made an absolutely huge mistake. Now, yesterday during the Rangers practice, we ended up getting the released lines. And as you can see, Alexi Lafreniere was on the fourth line and was an extra as well. But things found a way to get worse. Larry Brooks reporting that Alexi Lafreniere will be scratched against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, this is a crazy move by Gerard Gallant, and it might be a sign of things to come when it comes to Lexi Lafreniere's time as a New York Ranger. But we're going to be breaking it all down here and what it means towards the future, potentially a trade in the future. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that like button if you guys are new. 50% of you guys aren't subscribed, so if you like hockey and trade content, this channel is the place to be. Now, the timing of everything is quite interesting. This scratch comes after the 4-0 bad loss versus the Washington Capitals. And even though the Rangers had quite a bit of momentum coming into this game, it seemed like that momentum was completely evaporated. And although the rest of the Rangers forward group didn't look all too great, in the minutes that he did play, Lafreniere did feel quite invisible. Now, over the last five games, Lafreniere has actually been better than usual. He got one assist versus the Islanders and two assists versus the Blackhawks. But it's obvious that there's just too many games stacking up where Lafreniere isn't really pushing and isn't really being that elite player that Gallant and the Rangers want to see. But Alexi Lafreniere's career up to this point just has not panned out to what we expected to see. The biggest problem, of course, being a natural left winger and going to the Rangers, who already have Artemi Panarin and Chris Kreider on the roster, it was immediately obvious that Alexi Lafreniere was going to have some difficulties to start out, but those troubles have kind of continued. At age 21, besides a few playoff games here and there, he hasn't risen to that elite status that we have all expected him to get to. And although there's definitely been flashes, again, especially going back to last year's playoffs, it just has not been consistent at all from him. And after 2020, where he put up an astounding 112 points in 52 QMJHL games, one of the best QMJHL draft years we've ever seen, the production just has not quite translated to the NHL level. And even though there might be a better point pace right now, 17 points in 36 games, it seems like his defensive game has been lackluster, and the consistency of his pace has just not been there. It feels like the speed at which the NHL is at is just a little bit farther ahead than what Lafreniere can handle on a game-to-game -game basis, and that's been, I think, the biggest problem where he's tried to transition into being that elite player, but even though he has the talent to, that pace has really hold, held him back from really capitalizing and being a true top six player. Now, with Gerard Gallant scratching Alexi Lafreniere, Gallant basically just put out a notice to the entire rest of the league just how much the Loft situation has escalated with the New York Rangers and how right now it's just not a good fit whatsoever. I mean, even though Panarin and Kreider are probably on the back half of their careers, they're still going to be playing for a very, very long time. And that still leaves Alexi Lafreniere on his natural left side without really clear cut top six and power play time. And I'm just saying with how Lafreniere has played up to this point, I feel like for him specifically, it just doesn't feel like the Rangers are a great fit anymore. And it never really was a great fit in the first place and continued to not really be a good fit. I mean, the Rangers lucked out with that first overall pick. They were not expecting to get it, and they lucked it into this great, talented young player, but didn't quite have the space and the options to really play him where he needed to thrive and find that pace at the NHL level. Pure and simple, he's not going to get to that level around 11 minutes per game. And even though this might be a warning sign to him and might affect his play in the short term, I think the paint is really on the wall. The writing is on the wall that it just feels like Lafreniere's time with New York is going to come to an end eventually. And to me, I don't care if you're a top contender. I don't care if you're a rebuilding team. Every team right now should be calling in on Alexi Lafreniere, even though that pace hasn't been amazing. I feel like if he goes to a team and he's getting top power play time, which I think is so important, he'll start to really find his game and at least become a maybe 60, 70 point guy. I don't think he's going to be this generational type player like some might have believed back in his draft year, but this might still be a great first line player. And it just feels like, especially with how Kako's played recently as well, that Lafreniere will never get that shot as that first line top power play guy which is really what he needs to thrive. He is an offensive player first and foremost, and that's where the development should be going. But that's just the problem. Because the Rangers have had such limited time for him, he's now had to blend his game into this power forward type, which is just never what Lafreniere was all about. And to me, I feel like if he goes to a different team, 
let's say the Montreal Canadiens or something, if he's able to go to a team where he's getting top power play time, that would be absolutely glorious for the rest of his career. Now, the Habs power play is awful. Not really the greatest <laughs> example, but you know what I mean. There's a lot of teams out there that can fit a player and a playmaker like Lafreniere and a shooter like Lafreniere onto their roster. And to me, I think he desperately needs somewhere else to go. And I don't even think with Lafreniere, it's a market thing. I think he could go to another big market as long as they are able to give him some power play time, give him some option to be an offensive player for once. The Rangers just have never really given him that chance to be this consistent offensive player, especially on the power play, where he's had to basically feast on even strength production throughout his career to get by. That's really just not going to work for an offensive player like this. And I think for the Rangers, Again, their opportunity has just not been there. And especially under Gerard Gallant, it also feels like Lafreniere will never get that chance either. Now, I'll probably make a video potentially on mock trades for Alexi Lafreniere, but there's a few teams that I think definitely could go after him. One is the Chicago Blackhawks, who have a ton of roster size on that left side. You've got a couple of players that they might even could trade this trade outline like Afanasiu. But I think Lafreniere could pretty easily get a spot on that top six. It obviously depends on who they end up trading. But if they're going to keep players like Kane and Max Domi, imagine Lafreniere, Domi, and Kane. That would be the perfect situation, I think, for Lafreniere to be in. Second is the Detroit Red Wings, who also have a lot of space on that left side. you got Kubelik, probably more in a power play role. But at the same time, you could still have him in the top six pretty easily. And I think under Steve Eisman, he would do a lot better. Also, I think the Vancouver Canucks would be interesting. If they're going to trade a player like Garland and, and also Kuzmenko at the trade deadline, Lafreniere would fit in pretty well. And alongside an offensive player like JT Miller, maybe even Elias Pettersson, that could be really dangerous. But the Alexi Lafreniere situation has gotten absolutely wild. And for the New York Rangers, I think they've now made a mistake, basically just putting out there that Lafreniere can now be available, really. I mean, that's what it all comes down to. Scratching a first overall pick, now almost three years after he was drafted. I mean, even though the Rangers might not want to trade him, at the same time with how it's gone, you might have to at this point if you're Chris Drury. And within the Rangers roster, they practically tried everything. But at the same time, you got the root of the problem, which is just the lack of opportunity. There's no way a coach like Gerard Gallant is going to play Lafreniere over Panarin and Kreider full time. It's just not going to happen. And we've seen how that's affected the Rangers ice time with the young players, how it's affected the development of the young players. And to me, if Lafreniere is going to become still a star in the NHL, it's not going to happen in New York. Well, this was a depressing video to make. I remember reacting to the draft lottery and being so excited to potentially see Lafreniere go to the Big Apple, but it has not turned out like we all expected, unfortunately. But let us know in the comments down below, what do you guys think about this Lafreniere situation? Am I overreacting to it? Is it just going to be a one game thing? Or do you think we could see a Lafreniere trade down the line? Which teams could go after him? What are your mock trades for him? Let me know down below. And of course, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that notification bell, share the video with all the hockey fans you guys know online. Get the Lafreniere news out there, and I will see you in the next video or stream. Goodbye.